Welcome to Gab and Jam, episode 174. And what are we talking about today? Okay, so today our topic is doing the inner slash outer work is necessary to stay creative. And of course, this one is um, was inspired by a creative pep talk number uh, episode number three twelve. But it's all it's talking about how to remain consistently creative. Okay. Okay. All right. So, what's our first point? Okay. So, our things to consider is um, first of all, it's hard to stay creative because it's hard to know how much to share. Right. Right. And I know that that's a topic that all creators uh, kind of struggle with. I know novelists. You know, when, when if they write about people in their lives, a lot of times they get in trouble. Right. You know, if they write the truth about something that's painful or, um, you know, what, what do you mean by too that? Too revealing. What do you mean, like, if you're talking about other people? Yes. Okay. Or even if it's a character. And and I've read a couple of books where people say, you know, so and so swears that that this character is modeled after them, but they're not. Right. And, but it's hard not to draw from yeah. you know those experiences yeah. to create the work so the same thing with songs that yeah. you know there might be songs that are deep and you know the vulnerable but yeah. that are about the people in your life so do, do you share that we talked about that before with the transparent lyrics. yeah do you, I, I mean I, I don't think there's a problem with sharing things you know meaning that even if you're not gonna specifically talk about somebody yeah you know meaning that you, you can share an incident that you went through with a, you know, a particular person uh-huh. without naming the person. Right, but I, but that's been the thing that people say that they will come back and, and say you thought you I know it's about me even though you don't. I, uh, name did, that didn't Carly Simon ha- handle that? <laughs> <laughs> I know you thought the song was about you. Yeah, yeah, you're so vain so that I know that you think that the song was about, about you. Yeah, I mean, yeah, come on. True. I mean, you know what yeah. I mean? And if you haven't named a particular person, yeah. you know, and they go, oh, surely you wrote this about me. It's like, you know. So then be the star. Right? Get over yourself. I mean, I, so I, I, I'm saying as long as you're not like specifically putting a person on blast, yeah. blah, 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 saying this is this particular person or something okay. like that. I mean, you know, I, I'm saying that you know, I, I I don't understand what the issue is. I mean, now I mean the person might take umbrage with it, but yeah. I think that's that's the thing where you have to decide. You know, you have to make peace with that. Yourself. Or even your own, I guess. Also, what to share as far as your own, you know, insecurities or like you know people who struggle with mental illness. If it's a clinical, right? You know, diagnosis. Like, yeah. do you share all of that? Yeah. Well, I guess it all depends on how you share it. So. Um, you know, the great thing about art is that we have these things called metaphors yeah. that we can so use. So let's go back to the so, transparent uh, right. lyrics. So, so. so I'm, you know, I mean, you could write things metaphorically. Yeah. And, you could, and it depends on how specifically you're getting with these yeah. things. You yeah, know, I true. mean, so, I mean, I, you know, a long time ago, I wrote this song called If Two Was One. So right. where it was like talking about having basically a split personality. Right. You know, but in the way that it was written, I don't know if that's blatantly obvious within the Okay, lyrics, right. Okay. You know, so, but, but it was kind of going towards this, you know, internal struggle, mm-hmm. you know, that I was going through at the time. But mm-hmm. but instead of just saying, hey, I'm going through this struggle, struggle, struggle right. at the time, and then that's what you sing in the lyric, right. you know, because at least I know for me, specificity a lot of times doesn't work mm-hmm. with trying to sing a song. And to be artistic. And, artistic, and all the rest of that yeah. type of stuff, right? Yeah. I mean, you know, so, you know, if you're writing a Tracy Chapman or a Bob Dylan song, maybe you can get away with that. Yeah. But I'm just saying that, you know, <laughs> I, but me, you yeah. know, I, I'm not usually very verbose within right. lyrics. Right, right. And so that means that I, I have a rhyme and I have, you know, a certain... Like uh, some imagery that kind of captures that, that idea. That it kind of gets yeah. to that point okay. and say, okay, this, this is it. This captures that point without me saying it. Right, without you, you know? being blatant and saying, yeah. you know, whatever the issues are, whatever whoever the people are, whatever the specific incident is. Yeah, and so, okay. I, so I think that I tend to go to a higher level okay when i to start kind of to write back. Okay. yeah that that that's kind of the way that i might write Approach something that. okay yeah. all right i like that so okay because that is gonna probably throughout your life of writing is probably gonna be yeah. a lot of places where you draw your inspiration right um and so that leads to the next point is how do you know what crazy is too crazy or how you know well i, I don't think there's a such thing as that so i mean i again I, it, it 
you have to be committed to what you're going to be. And then after that, you have to let the world at large do with it what they want. Okay, okay. I mean, at least to me. Okay. I mean, because because once you start asking that question, what crazy is too crazy yeah. or something like that. I mean, I mean I'm, I'm not talking about, you know, killing somebody on camera or anything right. like that. So let's, let's, let's just <laughs> X, let's X out the things that are completely illegal right. and all the rest yeah. of that kind of stuff. So let's, let's, let's get rid of that. Okay. So for the record, that kind of stuff is too crazy. Okay. okay? okay. So, so, so I, I, I'm not talking okay. about that. All right. But I'm just talking about from an artistic standpoint, yeah. I think to the point where you start second guessing yourself creatively right mm. and saying oh they might not get it or they might not get well you know i mean I, I thought that was the whole thing is that you're trying to find your tribe yeah and then finding your tribe i think you got to be true to yourself okay because i think if, you, if you're gonna lie to your tribe i think that's gonna be a problem because the tribe that you find is not gonna, not gonna be, gonna be right that's right. true that's true and we talked about that with shut up and sing with, right you know that you should have freedom if you believe in whatever right. that Right. That that ideal is you should have right. freedom to express it without worrying about that. So that right. is a part of that too. And I think that's probably maybe the downfall of what we have today. So meaning that with all the technology, all the access to social media that we have today, um, you do have a way of sounding or being like someone else. Okay. All and right. people will teach you how to do it. All right. You know, so I mean, I, if you what want do you the, mean? I'm saying it, if you want the drum sounds that Timbaland used oh, on yeah. XX Record or right. whatever, there's somebody who's on YouTube who can show you how to program yeah. a Timbaland beat. Yeah, that's there's true. somebody who can show you, hey, how to program the sound that Tame and Pala used on blah 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 songs. Right. Or you know, yeah. or Charlie Pluth or show you, hey, how I did Blah, blah, blah. Yeah, that's true. And how to yeah. do this song in the future. The problem is, you know, that's already been done. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So by the time he's showing you how oh, to yeah. do it, it's been done 20,000 times. Yeah. So, and, and that's the same thing with people and, and getting views and all the rest of yeah. this kind of stuff. I mean, you know, if, if you're a woman and you play guitar, just put your <laughs> breasts on top of the guitar, show as much cleavage as you can. You'll get a lot or of Or the things. short skirt, right? right. Yeah, yeah, everybody yeah, knows too. that, yeah. right? You know what I mean? Yeah. That, that's what you do. Yeah, that will get you someplace. Yeah. You know, so yeah. if you got a cute face, whatever else, right. do that. Show your body. Do all the rest of those type of right. things. These are the type of things that will get you clicks. Yeah, you know, and so. A lot of times you get distracted on that. Yeah, that's and, true. And and that becomes the priority. Right. Again, you lose you and right. you lose trying to find your tribe. Right. And I'm saying that's a whole different yeah. thing. You know, I mean, it, it, it reminds me of that. Um, the Twilight Zone episode. Well, yeah. Well, that uh, and, and, well. and that, that, that Finding Sugarman. Oh yeah, you know what I mean yeah, that yeah, that, yeah, that, that documentary, you know, yeah. about this guy, you know, who released a record back in the 1970s, yes. and it found nobody. Right, he, you know, he was <laughs> right. I mean, the it record lost level, deal, him, right? You know, and and they promoted it. It just fell flat. And then in South Africa, it just became this thing. Yeah. You know, and his tribe was in South Africa. Yeah. And then after and they kept a while, sharing it and he became legendary. Right. 30. At first, they were saying that the whole legend was that he was dead. Right. And all right. That's this kind of stuff. And I think there was all type of mythology about the way he died. And right. All right. This kind of stuff. And I kind of find out, no, this guy's alive. And he started doing gigs in South Africa. Yeah. You know, yeah. so again, I mean, right. but that's it finding his tribe. And I'm saying that it takes patience to do that. Yeah. You know, a heck of a lot of patience. It man. does, but yeah. you just don't know. I mean, yeah. and, and, and that's and, what we're talking about, about remaining creative. So that shouldn't bother you, I guess. Right. The, the, the thing about it being a long, yeah. a long uh, time, because that is what we're talking about. Or being too crazy. It. That yeah. that's the other part yeah. because that's that's who you are. Yeah. You know, so like Bajork and yeah. you know her in the swan dress. Yeah. You know, for Bajork fans. Oh yeah. You know. And it was expected. Yeah. You know what I mean? And it was they fun. Expected, yeah. They expected from her. That's that's what she does. Yeah. You know, now for people who weren't a part of, yeah. you know, her fandom, yeah. you know, it was crazy. Yeah. It was over the top. It yeah. was nuts. Yeah. You know, I mean, who who would do something like that? Yeah. But, I mean, I don't know how many years it's been since she's done oh, that. Oh, but people still know the swan right. drive. Right. People is still know so it. Good. Right. They had Ellen and all kinds of other people doing, and they, they mention it, and generations later, people right. still know right. about that dress. So yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So I like that. Um, okay. Um, so the the other the next point is that you must, I guess you must kind of agree if you want a, a lifetime 
of creativity to allow yourself to be vulnerable. So it kind of piggybacks on the first and the second point that yeah. you're gonna that there's gonna be something that you're gonna offer up of yourself that is deeply personal. Right. Because even if you're talking about rainbows and fields of daisies, there's still something that is going to be expressed within that. Well, and that's going to open you up to people. And to me, the, the vulnerability I always feel like is rejection. Is that I don't care how frank and honest you are and how you just pour your soul into something, inevitably somebody's going to say it sucks. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that, that, that this expression yeah, that you true. have put out in yeah. the universe either sucks or, you know, or even worse. That they're gonna say, eh. right? You know what I mean? Like, yeah. you know, I take it or leave it. Yeah. And, nah, I just decide I'm gonna leave it. Leave it. You know what I mean? So <laughs> yeah, that's not the worst. Right. Exactly. <laughs> like, oh, for another special, we have another special. Right. Scene, you'd right? rather do again. Right. You'd rather be. Uh, it sucks than to have somebody say, "I didn't even notice it." Exactly. Like, what, yes. what, what song? Uh, yeah, what? yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I didn't even know it. <laughs> no, I. What? You did music. <laughs> right. Exactly. Yeah. You know. So again, I mean. So I think with that level of vulnerability, uh, I I don't know what else mm -hmm. could be worse than that yeah. part of it, you know, yeah. because I mean, again, if you're getting critiques, if you're getting things like that, at least to me, then that means that people are at least paying attention to it yeah. and they have noticed it and they feel like it's worthwhile to enough reach out. Yeah. To, to review or yeah. to do whatever. Yeah. And so whether or not the review is good or bad, I think that substantively, you've done what your art needed to do. Yeah, that's true. It's reaching people. It's reaching people and it has them talking. Right, exactly. Yeah. So, Whereas yeah. If, you, yeah. if it goes out and people are just apathetic about yeah. it and not saying anything, yeah. I think that's almost worse. Yeah. You know, because so of the too. fact that, you know, it is the tree falling in the forest and nobody's yeah. there to hear it. So. Yeah, yeah. All right. Um, and so the next point, which is something we hear a lot about artistic people, um, that we're introverts is that solitude is necessary. Doing nothing and being quiet and being still has to be somewhere factored into the process. And that generally, if you're constantly going and doing, yeah. it, which is why it's hard for bands who need to write an album if they're mm -hmm. constantly touring. I know that they've talked about that, how it's hard to now put yourself in the frame of mind where you're receiving so that you can create right. the next set of songs. So, I, and I think that sometimes it depends on what your creative process is like. I okay. think that, especially for people who are more collaborative uh -huh. with the way that they do things, mm -hmm. that maybe that's what works best for them. Okay. Is to be around people, to, to absorb ideas off of people. Okay, I like um, that, Get okay. that stimulation and that kind of thing. So I think for, for them, that might work. I okay. mean, I think I've been inspired in different environments. So, I mean, it's like, um, there have been times like, you know, when we were playing regularly out, you know, just warming up, mm -hmm. you know, and just just the, the drilling line of getting ready to play, mm -hmm. hearing the guitar out the amp and whatever, and then maybe whatever, you know, thing that I came up with on the pedal board and I just start playing something and all of a sudden you got something, wow. you know? Yeah. And so there's been yeah. like a bunch of tunes that are kind of, you know, born from a riff mm -hmm. that, you know, kind of started out, out of this kind of practice yeah. section, you know, just because that day, the amp, the guitar, yeah. the people around me, all the stuff that was happening, it just felt good. Oh, wow. You know, I mean, I don't know why, it just did. I couldn't, I don't think I could have come up with that. Okay, I had at to. home. Okay, you all know right. what I mean? At home, alone, I, in that environment, I, it's, sometimes you need that other type of stimuli, mm -hmm. and then sometimes you don't. I mean, you know, I, it, okay. it, 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 it it all depends, you yeah, know? Yeah, but if you're going to have a sustained, lifelong creative practice, perhaps right. having the two, which it leads us to the next point. Well, let me just say this one thing, and that is, I remember that with uh, You Are Love. Okay. And it's like, I know I was kind of, you know, struggling with the second verse. Yeah. You know, we went to church, yeah. and then, you know, I heard one of the elders say, you are God alone. And like, <laughs> it's the second verse. <laughs> There it is, you know. I mean, that you know, you, like, you are God alone. It's Almighty on your throne. It's yeah. Like, and that that part came there, and it was like, that's it. Right. I, I'm on my way. That second verse is done. Yeah. Just from hearing that that bit of stimuli. So that's why I'm saying, as far as sometimes it is a combination uh -huh. of all those things that kind of spurs you on. Okay, so you've actually touched on the next point, which is experiencing life right, yeah. is also necessary. So that's yes. getting out and about. Yeah. And I know we've talked about this before, but traveling yeah. and, and just being in different environments, 
that a lot of times it brings something different out of you because it requires something different right for you to meet that situation especially as introverts i know for me yeah especially getting out right you know and seeing things that you've never seen or that you know you rarely see you know, because people talk about that. You hear an interest in a line in a movie, write it down. Yeah. You hear, yeah. you know, you see an interest in title, write it down. Yeah. You know, always take in all of these things. And then that way, when you do get back into that solitary moment and you're kind of fishing for stuff, you might be able to find something through all of that stuff that you've accumulated. Yeah. And then so, having kids. That we, right. uh, that's one of the things that if people who don't have kids, I don't know how you do it because there's some... You, you do grow and change as a person. Right. And so your creativity shifts some right. because kids will do some crazy things yeah. that end up, you know, that finding right. its way. Right. You're like, wow, I would have never looked at it like that. And right. then that finds its way into your creativity. So. It does. I mean, and, and while you're in the middle of doing that, because I know that, that I think, you know, Charlie Poop was talking about, he does that with the, the voice notes. Mm -hmm. And I, I use them a lot. I yeah. remember, you know, it was uh, Head Hill High and it was, uh, I don't know, it was a bridge or one of those parts. It was like I was going to the airport to pick up my sister. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and I was just playing the track and then all of a sudden that part came to me. So mm -hmm. now I was like, okay, let me get my voice notes yeah. and let me sing this part. Yeah. So I'll have it, you know. Yeah. So now I, I know this part and, and I got it there and that's a good way to kind of lock things in in the moment. And I used to have that too, you know, when we would go to church or something yeah. like that. And, you know, in between time, it'll be like, oh, wait a minute. This, I, got an yeah, idea. I got this melody. <laughs> I was just playing that guitar line and now this melody just popped in my head. Let me go ahead and sing this. Yeah. I seen that. And now I got the whole thing. Yeah. So that's another way of kind of pulling things together. So, and sometimes I would even do harmonies. Mm -hmm. It's like I would, yeah. so at the same time, it's like I'm hearing the harmonies, I'm hearing what the background should be doing, I'm hearing everything. Yeah. So let me just get all that down at one time. Take your dictation. Right. <laughs> and then finally, uh, the last point is something you talked about um, uh, previously, but things are different now. So yeah. back in the older days, you know, you perform or you put something out and then, you know, a week later or a few days later, you'll hear feedback. Whereas now, like you were saying, it, the communication right. is constant and it's instant. And, or, it, or it could not be. And I, I think actually it's probably worse now than it was before. What do you mean? Because of the simple fact that we do expect feedback to be instant. Uh, we expect that when we post something, yeah. everybody who we know, who we are in some kind of way affiliated with, yeah. friends with, whatever it might be, that... Oh, it showed up on their timeline, and that became the most important thing to it's them. A, yeah, is to true. react to what it is that you That's put up, true. That's right? true. Right? And so then when you get no reaction, or yeah. two or three, or whatever, yeah. you know, and, and one like or no likes, right. now all of a sudden you're crushed right. because you feel like people saw it and just ignored it. Yeah. You know, and, and, and you just don't know. You I don't know, know yeah. really what happened. Or sometimes it might be weeks later yeah. that they may actually respond to something that you posted, yeah. you know, two months ago. Yeah. So, so I think that is the instant gratification of today mm -hmm. has got us to a point where we're very impatient when it comes to feedback yeah. and when it comes to, you know, people relating to what you do, mm -hmm. because you do expect things to be instantaneous. If we live in a microwave society today, you yeah. know, it, it's like, hey, you know, we want the turkey dinner to be done <laughs> in three minutes. <laughs> So that's just uh, the way we run. But then also uh, the point that you made earlier, which it is is harder to just bumble along and be experimental. Right. That that was another point that things are different now because yeah. you can. The temptation is to follow yes. the likes and the and what is already popular because right. you know instantly what's yeah. popular. So or, or what's coming out of people's you know bedrooms. I mean, yeah. when, when you hear okay. Phineas made the Billy Eilish record mm -hmm. in his bedroom. Yeah. And he's winning Grammys. Yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. The damn bar has just went <laughs> way up high, right? You know what I mean? That, that's compl that's like, yeah. whoa. You yeah. know, and, and don't get me wrong. People have done this before. Mm -hmm. Like uh, the Boston Records mm -hmm. was done in a home studio. Okay. You know, so the more than a feeling. But that was like the, the exception, exception, exception to, to the rule. rule. Yeah, that's Whereas right. now I'm saying that, you know, Phineas, you know, people making records on that level yeah. in their bedroom. It's more par for the course than yeah. what it's been before. Yeah. So it, it has up the bar with respect to, you know, if you're going to make a pop record, mm -hmm. what it what, what it needs to sound like. Yeah. You know, yeah. so that has really, you know, changed a lot. 
Yeah. So, but if you're going to continue um, to stay creative in the long term. And experimental, then you don't have to meet that bar. Yeah. You set the bar. That's true. So that, that's, that's the whole true. different thing. That's true. You which know, is the, that's the, the luxury you. of being a DIY rock star. Right. Is right. That, is that we do have that choice. Hey, right. You can do, you make things sound the way it sounds good to, to you. To you, yes. You don't have to conform to the, you know, the national norms yeah. and all the rest of this kind of stuff. You don't have to do that no. you know it's about hey does it sound good to me does it sound good to my tribe yeah and that's the most important thing yeah that's true i love it all right so what do you think what do we leave out that keeps you creative what are the things that that are practices that you engage in the philosophy that you go by what helps keep you a creative individual we'd love to know drop it in the comments below and you already know yeah sugar fit it's everywhere it's so everywhere stream it everywhere I don't even have to go into the name wherever you can stream <laughs> it. At, camp, you can stream CD it, right? Baby, yeah. um, Spotify, yeah. but you know, Deezer, you know title. what you use, right? Yeah. You just go for it. Then, if you want a CD, you can come to us. You yes. go to Bandcamp. <laughs> you go to CD Baby if you want to get something like that. If you want the vinyl, yes. then just go over to Patreon. Yes, you know, the link um, is below. Yeah, and you know. Hook us up and, you know, yes. we'll get that vinyl out as soon as we raise enough money. Yeah. Okay. If you dig the vibe, be sure to subscribe. We're wishing you love, peace, and chicken grease. Yeah.